Okay. So we were talking about cotton, right? Correct. So I didn't get to get a little field trip plan, but we're going to try to do that maybe next week or something like that. But in the meantime, we're going to switch gears a little bit, switch over to the beef cattle industry. Beef cattle industry. So, as you can imagine, we got a little PowerPoint here. It's a pretty lengthy PowerPoint. I'll try my best to get it to you. Try to get it printed off and get it to you. Um, it's quite a bit of paper, uh, so we'll see what kind of resources I got to get this to you. But in the meantime, you might as well take some good notes on it. A lot of your test questions will come off this PowerPoint. Okay? Okay. All right. So, what do you think? What agricultural commodity generates the most revenue in Texas? Beef cattle. Beef cattle. Okay. What is a commodity, first of all? How many of you are in cash is a economics class? What's a commodity? Stuff that generates money. Huh? Anything you sell generates money. Nobody knows the real proper definition? Not really. <laughs> Not, I don't really do, but. <clears throat> um, a commodity is obviously something that's used, uh, some type of money making thing, right? Commodity. There's all kinds of commodities. What are, what are some other examples of agricultural commodities? Um, we already talked about one. Cotton. Cotton. What else? Cereal grains, I guess. Yeah, some cereal grains, such as? Corn, wheat. Corn, wheat. Oats. Oats. What are some other agricultural commodities? Mm -hmm. Well, we used to be. Not really that much anymore, but what we used to be. Soybeans. Yeah, soybean that kind of falls in that cereal grain type type conversation. But so obviously, cattle probably our most uh, number one agricultural commodity uh, in the state of Texas. So this is a little bit older figures, but based on our uh, ag cash receipts of 2011. Cattle accounted for 49%, 49% of the revenue based in agriculture in 2011. That's quite a bit. It's quite a bit. It's you know almost half, obviously. Okay. Then followed by cotton, then dairy products, and broilers, corn, wheat, chicken eggs. You can read. I'm not even such a reading ability there. But cattle account for a huge, huge. Uh, facet of production uh, in Texas. Um, contribution to the United States economy, ag cash receipts received from the sale of agricultural products totaled set $374 billion. That's quite a bit. So that, that's kind of that's kind of hard to say that, or that makes it kind of hard to believe that agriculture is such a small small piece of the pie when it comes to, you know, the general economy. Yeah, that only accounts for like, what, 3% or something? It's less than Actually, it's 2%. 2%. And I think it's going down. Okay? So it's kind of crazy how such a big industry only accounts for a certain percentage of, you know, such a small piece of the pie when it comes to the United States economy as a whole. Okay, so how many total cattle were there in the United States as of January 1, 2013? I don't know if they've done a census since, us, since then. Hmm. How many do you think? Like 20 million? 20 million. It's tough to say. Throw some answers at me. In the United I mean, States? Think about so. Yeah, think about it. I don't know. I'm thinking higher than I'm thinking of billions. Billions? <laughs> There's a lot of cows where I'm from. Uh, billions is, is pretty far north. Okay. <laughs> what do you think, Tom? 35 million. Oh. <laughs> 89.3 million head, okay? I think that's a pretty constant figure. I mean, probably in the grand scheme of things, it's relatively constant. 
but at the same time, you know, it's always changing. Okay? Always changing. What do y'all think it is now? Y'all think it's up or down from then? I think down. Why do you think it's down? New technologies. New technologies? Right. Since 2013? Maybe. I, mean, I think people maybe... Explain your answer. New technologies such as what? Okay, just kidding. I don't know. You may be thinking like the efficiencies, like with Raugro and... Well, yeah, but those have been around since 2013. Oh, yeah. Maybe the market. I'm talking about just like, let's talk about market and maybe like drought conditions. Yeah, maybe. I mean, 2011 was a pretty big drought. That kind of hurt it quite a bit. Then, since 2013, you know, from 2013 till now, well, say up until like maybe a year ago, what was the cattle market doing? It was going to It was at an astronomically high price. Okay, so what were people doing then? Selling. Yep. Okay? They were buying and selling because you had to sell them. You had to buy them first in order to sell them. But then what happened? Fell off again. Fell off. Fell way out of bed. Wheels on the cattle market bus successfully fell off. Okay? And so, but at the same time, what were people doing? It was raining, it, we were looking all right, winters were wet, so people were doing what? Buying. They were buying. They were buying. And so now we're at a point where the market is in the, in the punch bowl, and so people are kind of hanging on to what they got. They're going to try and ride it out, I think, because they bought all these Maybe like these cow calf pears and stuff, or these three for ones for like three grand, and now they ain't even worth half that much. And now it's starting to stop raining again, but the supply has not hit its peak. Everybody's based on the knowledge I've obtained. But the supply has not quite hit its peak at what it's going to. I think it's still on the way up before it's going to start going back down. So here is just a graph of the, the U.S. cattle inventory. So we started out back in 1925, okay, a long time ago. We had somewhere around 60 million head of cattle, okay? Then, at any given time in 1975, we had up over 130 million head of cattle. And it's since planed off since then. I would probably attribute more of this right here, Kaylin, to technology more than anything. Because what? The, the population of the United States continues to grow. That means the number of acres we get to farm is, how, is what? Less. A lot less. So we got to provide more beef with less acres. And we can, I think we can attribute most of this right here to technology. Okay? Wasn't the ag economy right at the, like right in the early 70s and, in, you know, into the, into the 70s was fairly good, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, real, real good. So I that, mean, was take, that probably had something to do with the numbers. Yeah, absolutely. It had a lot to do with, you know, the numbers that people were buying and stuff like that. I mean, you take like, I don't know, we just talked about cotton, you take cotton farming, for instance. We had, the price of cotton now is the same as it was in 1970, which is pretty depressing. Mm. And in 1970, the average cost of a tractor was probably 300% less than what it is right now. And the average cost of fuel was way, way less. The average cost of everything was significantly less than it is now. And so the economy was obviously boosting. And now cotton costs the same. Tractors cost a quarter million dollars. Machines cost a quarter million dollars. And we're still getting paid the same for the, for the product. Kind of, makes it, kind of makes it hard to make a living, right? So yeah, that's whenever, you know, I'll probably back in 1975, I'm not 100% sure on that, but it was probably a heck of a time for the agricultural commodities. Alright, so what state do you think has the most cattle? 
going to go with Texas. Kyle says Texas. What does Kevin say? Texas. What does Brian say? Kevin says Texas. No one thinks it's any other state. What about like Montana or Wyoming or something? Well, there ain't no people. There's just cattle. Well, I don't know. Wyoming's like my second place. I think we have like a lot more land. So I think they're... Land? Well, yeah, we're twice as populated as Wyoming is. Have yeah, it. Population. It's proportions. It's percentage based. But you're right, it is Texas. <laughs> okay, why do you think it's Texas? Texas is the best. <laughs> Everything is bigger in Texas, right? You bet. It's the land of the Cowboys. Huh? It's the land of the Cowboys. Well, think about this, all right? Let's say we go down. Like, how many cattle per acre can we run here? Do you know what the stocking rate is here? In this part of Texas? Yeah. I don't know. What is it, five, four or five per 20 acres or something like that, or less? Four or five per 20 acres? It's a pretty heavy stocking rate. Probably like one per 25 to 30 acres. So, we have a lot more land out here, but say, like, let's venture down into. South Texas, Gonzalez, Bastrop, you know, South San Antonio, all those areas. Your stocking rate is significantly higher. And every Tom, Dick, and Harry down there has cows. Every one of them. You can't drive, I mean, from where are you from? Alabama. Well, yeah, where's the part of Alabama? Alabama? What's the stocking rate in Alabama? You wouldn't have asked me if I told you. Uh, <laughs> huh? So if you wouldn't have asked me if I told you. Uh, I'm sure it's probably pretty good. I know last time I went to Georgia, I talked to some of those guys, and they were running like one to one. trying to get at here is that you go down in, in like the southern part of Texas, well every every old couple or whatever's got a few cows when they're punching. Also, what does Texas have a lot of that a lot of other states don't? Texas have that a lot of other states don't. Huh? About feedlots? Feedlots? There's quite a few feedlots in Texas. Quite a few. I mean, obviously, you probably got Colorado also has quite a few feedlots, but Texas got quite a few of them. Especially you go up in the panhandle. Dalhart, Hereford, Dumas, all those areas up there. All it does is reek of manure, reek of money. Okay? So, 2012 total cow calves, 11 million head. Now, that's also saying that we got these feedlots that can stock 80,000 head apiece. You don't take long to add up 80,000 head to make it 10 million, right? Right. So, don't take that long. But Texas, followed by Nebraska, followed by Kansas, followed by California, followed by Oklahoma. Okay? So what percentage of the world's beef supply does the United States generate? 35%.
leaders, the United States, rocking in a pretty comfortable first place, followed by the European Union, Brazil, China, Argentina, all the way down here to Mexico. How come Mexico don't produce any? So arid. Oh, I think that's Corey the cattle down there. They don't bring no beef. But then, no grass. how come you don't see like India or any of those countries down here? Because they're sacred. Over there. The cow is a sacred part of the family that will never be slaughtered. Okay. Really? It doesn't surprise me that Brazil's in third. Oh no, Brazil's in yeah. third. They're thriving. Yeah. Thriving. So global beef produced in 2010 told 125.1 billion pounds of carcass. Not live. Carcass. What does that mean? Slaughter. That means they were dead. Okay? That is almost edible product. Almost. Total global beef production peaked in 2007 and has declined linearly since 09. Well, 1% change from 09 to 2010. The United States produced 20.8% of the world's beef supply in 2010. It's quite a bit of beef. Alright? So what is the trend in the cattle inventory the United States referred to as? What do you think? Someone take a stab at it. and downs of the cattle industry, called the cattle cycle. I'll write that down. So this right here is a cattle cycle. Cattle cycle. Okay? So what interpretations can you make from evaluating the cattle inventory? Cattle numbers go through short periods of expansion and constriction. These periods are known as cattle cycles. Obviously, we can attribute those to maybe the drought, maybe the cattle price, uh, you know, maybe some sort of plague or disease or something came through. Like we had like that pink slime deal a couple of years back. They kind of hurt the cattle industry quite a bit. Uh, that's So what we have here is a graph of beef production versus cow inventory. So the blue there is your cow inventory, and your green there is your beef production. So from 1920 over up until about 1975, those were pretty synonymous. Okay, they were climbing at pretty much the same rate. Actually. And most times the cow inventory was higher than the beef production. Then, after 1975, the cow inventory came down. But what happened to the beef production? It kept climbing. Okay? It goes back to like a lot of those technologies that we talked about. As far as implants, EPDs, embryo transfer, all those types of things attributed to the increase in beef production because we were able to utilize the technology that was given to us uh, and rapidly change the genetics that we have uh, at an exponential rate, okay? So what could explain this phenomenon? One of them is an influence of a greater degree of continental crossbreeding, okay? So about 1965 or so, is when we brought over Charlotte and Kianina cattle. They influenced what we had quite a bit. 
more beef per pound, or more, not per pound, pound of beef still is pound of beef, but more beef per animal, okay? Average carcass weights have increased from 613 pounds to over 750 pounds today. It's quite a bit. So you take that, how many pounds difference is that? 750 minus 613. 140 pounds, right? 140 pounds times 89 million head. <laughs> That's a pretty big number, right? That's a pretty big number. Feedlot turnover rate has improved from two turns a year to 2.4 turns a year. What's a turn per year? Like the amount of cattle, like from the time they get it in to the time that they leave to slaughter. A complete turnover of cattle. So we get in these 80,000. Once we can take those 80,000, move them entirely out, and bring in a new set of 80,000, that's, that's a turn. So assuming turnover, what cattle they have in the feed yard, get them out and get new ones in. That's how they make money, is more turns per year. So from two turns a year to 2.4 turns a year. So that may not seem like much, but say we take that over two years. Well, that's almost another full turn. Almost a full turn. If you're slaughtering 80,000 head, that's 80,000 that's, that's 80, more head that you got to slaughter in those two years. Well, that's quite a bit of money. Quite a bit of money. Slaughter age has decreased because we can implant them. We can genetically select them to finish faster. Okay. So it means less time on feed, they're more efficient at the bunk. Improvements in production efficiency and technology have improved management of all segments of the beef industry. From cow-calf to the time they die. Technology has really uh, allowed us to make a lot of steps forward. A lot of steps forward. So how many total beef cows are there in the United States? Maybe 40 something million. Maybe 40 million, Kel says. I think like 35 million. 35 million, Kel says. 30, 35. 29.3 million beef cows. Okay? 29.3 million beef cows. So the cow inventory, do you think follows the same pattern of the total beef inventory? Yes. Yeah, it would have to. But you can't be you can't make calves without cows, right? Yeah, but I guess there's still some of like the recips and I mean we're still having calves. Well yeah, but how would you calculate that into the beef? make like how many pounds of beef and, and cattle that are going to, to market if there's X amount of those cows making replacements. Well that's just beef inventory. Oh. Not not slaughter numbers. Oh okay. That's just beef inventory. No, there weren't eighty nine million had slaughtered last year. There's probably more than that. Way more than that. But that's how that's what the inventory was. Mm. Okay? And this is the cow inventory. Now this is dairy plus beef cow. Okay, but um, it's all the same. It's going to have to directly follow it. I mean, I can show you. Excuse me. I can show you this graph and take you back to the other one. I bet you they're pretty dang close to the same. Because it only makes sense that they follow each other, right? Yeah. Only makes sense. Okay. This right here, in 2011, January, January of 11 to January of 2012, okay, we had a pretty big drought. A lot of people were hit by a drought. And so if you look at some of these states that are up here, these white states are states that lost cattle, that sold out, that reduced their herd. Okay, the blue ones uh, added to their herd. 
but you see a few more white states than you do blue states, right? Texas, big one, minus 660. Okay? That's minus 660,000 head. Not just 660 head, 660,000 head. Okay? So that took a pretty big hit. Oklahoma took a pretty big hit. Kansas took a pretty decent hit. All right? So, 2011-2012 had a drought. But since then, I think our numbers are back on the rise. Back on the rise. Um, I think you can probably see a plus number in most of those states. Okay? So what country consumes the most beef per capita or per person? We're going to go with the U.S. The United States? The United States. The United States of America, eh? Think about that for a minute. It's not true. Think about, think about this. All right? How many quacks do we have in this world now that are like, red beef is bad for you, uh, all in one, non-GMO, yada, yada, yada. I'm, I'm going, I'm a vegetarian. How many vegetarians do you think are in South America? Not many. Yeah. You know? There's a lot of vegetarians in 